Hey everybody, and welcome to another How to Write an APA video. In this one, we are going to take it slow. And what I mean by that is, in the last video, I did all of the t-tests together. And it, I don't know, that's a lot of information for a single video, even with like chapters and stuff. So in this video, I think I'm just going to do one kind of result section. And that is going to be what you see here, How to Write in APA 7th Edition one way ANOVA. So that's all we're going to do in this video. Stay tuned for other videos coming in the channel. Um, or if you're viewing this after all of them are there, I do have videos for, uh, or I will, or and I do have videos for a simple between subjects factorial video uh, within subjects, a repeated measures factorial video. So two separate videos for those and then a mixed between and within or a, a mix between and, and repeated measures factorial and how to write those. So just in this video, we are going to do one way ANOVA. So let's open up some data that we can get. I'm using Jamovi in this example here. So let's go ahead and find a data set that we can use to write a, in our one-way analysis of variance results section. I'll be back with you with some data. Okay, so here we have the clinical trial data, clinical trial. Now, where I got this, you can go ahead and add in your modules the learning statistics with Jamovi. I'm gonna go ahead and open that. This one right here, the LSJ hyphen data from Danielle Navarro and David Foxcroft, their uh, learning statistics with Jamovi textbook, their free textbook. They allow, they have all of these um, data files. So that's what I did, I went to open. And in the data library here, double click on that. So this um, clinical trial data set has, um, you'll probably be seeing it again when we do the, um, when we do a, a different one way ANOVA here or there. Um, so for this, or not a one way ANOVA, but a factorial ANOVA, probably I'll use this again in my between subjects factorial video because we can use that uh, in there as well. So here we have um, four variables. One is the ID, so we can get, we can ignore that one. Uh, the drug, and you can see that we have a placebo, uh, anxiety free which is an anti-anxiolytic, so, you know, thinking anxiety, and then joyzepam, uh, which would definitely be something related to depression, right? And so uh, there's another variable here. So we have three. Another variable here, therapy or CBT, or excuse me, no therapy versus CBT. For this video, we're going to ignore the therapy condition variable. Um, and so we're going to make the assumption that uh, the these three drugs, the placebo, the anxiety free and the joyzepam, are all just working basically against uh, a mood gain variable that we have here in our last one. So that's what we're going to do. So we are going to hypothesize here, and let me go ahead and left justify this, start a par uh, paragraph. So we are going to hypothesize um, our, our situation here. So we have a placebo, we have an anti-anxiolytic drug, and we have an antidepressant drug, and we're all we're going to see how they um, work on mood gain, if there's a difference between the three of them in an increased mood, an elevated mood. So um, what we say is we could say that um, a one way analysis of and apologize for any typing errors as I do this, I will try to quickly fix what I mess up. One way analysis of variance ANOVA was conducted to determine if mood gain was uh, no uh, to determine if oops three different types of drugs, a placebo, an anti-anxiolytic. I don't know if I spelled that right. Let's see what uh, anti-anxiolytic. Yeah, okay, there we go. Uh, an anti-anxiolytic and an antidepressant uh, could lead to positive, oops, positive, positive mood change. Okay, so let's go ahead and run the analysis really quick. ANOVA one-way ANOVA. Our dependent variable is mood gain. And the, the fun thing about the one-way ANOVA module is you can do as many as you want. And then we're going to throw drug in as our grouping variable. And um, we are going to uh, assume that they are equal variances, but we can also find that out if we do our homogeneity test. Uh, and I can't make that bigger, unfortunately. So I have this on the split screen like this, uh, the way you can do it in, in Max and just share half and half. Eh, what are you going to do, right? So, oops, didn't want to do that. There we go. No, 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 no. Let's move it all the way over. And there we go. All right. So we want um, Fisher's and over there. We want to go ahead and get our descriptives because we definitely need those. I have the normality test here and we're fine. Yeah, it's yeah, it's fine. Both both uh, homogeneity of variances. So we're definitely going to get Fisher's there. And then statistics, we get the mean difference. We get the reporting of the p-value. That's what we definitely want there. Sure. Why not test results there? OK, and we'll do the Tukey test for that. Uh, you can't do as much, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at that for the sake of argument here. Okay, so what I generally want to do is put my descriptives up first. Then I want to go ahead and do my inferential test. So this is going to be my F test, okay? And I'm going to break it up like this, and then I'm going to put it back into the paragraph form. And then I'm going to do my post hoc. So that's the general structure that we're looking for, okay? So descriptives. Let's go ahead and jump in there and say, and we're going to use uh, these means and standard deviations. Um, can replace with table or figure if you really want to. But let's go ahead and do this. So um, it looks like 
the uh, and we're going to go in the same order as I place them here, even though that's not the same order as they are in the the table here. But we're going to use parallel structure. So the placebo drug increased mood on average. Uh, let's see. What is that? That says 0 0.45, 0 0.45 units. And then we're going to put standard deviation here equals and I will italicize everything. So standard deviation is you can just see it right there. 0 0.28. I'm just going to do 0 0.28. Um, we can put the zero in front of that. Um, I should put the zero in front of this as the preceding zero rule because it can go higher than that. Um, the placebo drug increased mood on average 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.45 units because we don't know what the units are. So I'm just going to say that uh, while the anxi free, the anti anxiolytic drug increased mood on average point, uh, 0 0.72. I'm just going to uh, round there. And then again, SD oops, equals 0 0.39. And uh, joy, joy, Pam. Oops. That's supposed to be a Z. The antidepressant increased mood on average. Uh, that should be 0.72 units. My bad. Uh, and then here we do 1.48 and then standard deviation equals 0 0.21, which would be units. So I like using measures that have like units associated with them. Okay. So yeah, you're going to see some uh, word doesn't like anxiety free and, and, and joys of Pam, but that's or the word descriptives, which I think is weird. I'm going to add it to my dictionary because descriptives okay so those are descriptives okay and then we go through here now you don't have to do um it this way you can also express means as this so i'm going to do a slightly different version okay so um it, it turns out uh joy Pam, the anti-depressant increased mood better than anxi free the anti-anxiolytic and you can see that i'm not going in the same parallel structure okay I mean, I could write that if I wanted to, or the plus O. And so here I have my sentence. But oh, where's my where's my uh, my statistics? Well, that's where I, I put it. So I first write the sentence and then I insert my uh, let me add in on average here. OK, so I put it right after the word. OK, Joy Pam M equals 0.45 SD or 0 0.45, I should say SD equals 0 0.28. And then the whole thing here is and then we italicize M and S. D. So you can do that. I'm going to leave this one out because I'm getting this one in my I'm going to bring these down just to get it away from my final paragraph. OK, so then we grab these. Uh, I'm going to do a little monkey biz. Oh, um, that's not the right. Those aren't the right numbers. This is what happens when you do parallel construction and then forget about it the next time. So let's grab this one for placebo. And then the only thing we have is put an M equals in front of this. Is it perfect? And then the last one, 0.72 and 0.39 for ANSI free. Oops, sorry about that, y'all putting it's really frustrating that it does that. Uh, let's do it this way instead of parentheses this. OK, and then we get rid of SD and units and then M in there. Don't forget to put spaces before and after your math symbols. OK, so you can do it like that. So you can either keep the units as a part of the sentence, so it has to match the grammar of the sentence, or you can have it as parenthetical and use the Latin italicized letters asserts. Okay, so either we should start this sentence with placebo, change the as uh, of the sentence increased mood better. You would say did not increase mood anti-anxiolytic or the antidepressant one phrase. Let's do our inferential F test. This is really simple because I'm actually just going to append it to the end of the descriptive sentence here. So all I really need to do is write what that F test is. So we're going to we're going to find that F test from this top table here. OK, so we have value here, DF1. So I'll show you where the two goes. DF2, I'll show you where the 15 goes. Our P value, which is pretty simple, is less. This so is a pretty powerful test. So you write first start by and then immediately open parentheses. This is where you put DF1 two comma those the parentheses. That tells you the degrees of freedom for this F ratio. That number is 18.6. Now you can tell you six. I met it for putting the zero to maintain uh, the six. So we have two decimal points for pretty much all the row. OK, and then we do and we do P lowercase is less than point zero zero one. OK, and I'm going to put a period after it, because when I highlight this, when I put it all in there, we'll make it look good. So we italicize the P, we italicize the F. Now, the main thing that's uh, missing from this is I don't have an effect size. That's the one downside with using the one way ANOVA in Jamovi. But we could go up and do just ANOVA here and make it a one way ANOVA. So, you know, depending on what you'd like to do, um, it's up to you. Now, if you're being asked for an effect size, you have to go to ANOVA. So let me go ahead and do that just really quickly. Vectors, and then we get partial eta squared. So that's what I want. I want it just eta squared at this point. I mean, I could do, but it's going to be literally the same number. Okay. 
So you can see here, we've got a p-value of matches up here. And let's go ahead and grab our eta squared. Actually, instead of a period, I'm going to go ahead and put that. Now, I got to um, get eta. So you can see I, I pressed function or the goal, depending on what kind of Mac you're using. I don't know how to get this on Windows, so I apologize for you window viewers who are watching me right now. But I'm going to go ahead and search for eta. And this is the one that I want. Okay, as you can see, it's the one down match. Click on that, and it will plug it in. Now, we don't need to just do uh, 0 0.71. Okay, so that tells us that this is a really strong effect. Now, the funny thing is, is that it should actually be eight. So I'm going to go up and do superscript, and then I'm going to do a two. There we go. And then I'm going to turn off superscript, okay, just in case I needed something. This is eta squared, right? And it's telling us it's a really big effect. I mean, we're talking massive effect between these three uh, levels of this uh, independent on mood gain. The other thing that's telling you that it's a mass, how big F is, because F is telling you the ratio of very, its average is one. Which is much bigger than one. It tells you that um, you've got a big effect on your hands. Now, you don't want to take that at face value. You want to actually get your uh, effect size measurement here. Okay. So let's go back to this uh, previous one. Let's go ahead and just, I just want the results. I just want, let's see, can I close this fully? Hmm. Ooh, yes, I can. Nope. It was going to let me do it. It was going to do it. It can do it. Oh, it's struggling so hard. There we go. There we go. One thing that I'm going to do, close that. And I can see what I'm doing. All right. So I have my uh, output here. Uh, it's a little small. Let me see if I can increase the zoom. There we go. 120% should do it. Okay. And then I've also got my magnifier. Okay. So our last thing to do is post talks. This tells, this tells the reader that you want to step further to find out where the effect is. So this tells us that there is an effect, but it doesn't tell us where the effect is. Now looking at, we can kind of see that one of these drugs had a, uh, I even set it uh, right there, then the other two. And so we can imagine that that's where the effect is. But post hoc tests really show us that because to uh, Joyzepam up here, and then it compares Anxifree to placebo, Joyze placebo. So it does those three different pairwise that we need. Now, you don't need to go the, for the six because those are just the reciprocal pairwise. So it'd be placebo to Anxifree to placebo, Joyzepam to Anxifree. So it would just be backwards. So it only does three tests. The one way ANOVA a module does this in a lot tighter, but you only have a choice of two different postdoc tests. Tukey is perhaps the most common postdoc test, but I'm a fan of Bonferroni. If you wanted to do Bonferroni postdoc tests, you have to go through the ANOVA in uh, Jamovi. If you're using Jasper or another program, these things are going to be different. Okay, or if you're using SPSS or anything like that, you're, it's going to be different. The numbers should come out the same. The way that you do it is going to be different. So let's talk about these post hocs. So I'm going to say that um, a post hoc analysis, and this just means after the fact, post hoc analysis was completed to the nature of the observed effect. How about the analysis was conducted using a two-key adjustment because you have to adjust the p-values when doing post hoc tests because you don't want to inflate alpha or inflate uh, the per chance, the percentage of making a type 1 error. The analysis was conducted using two-key adjustment on pair-wise comparisons. Uh, we found, we found, I found, blah, 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 found, make it active uh, in any way that you want. So if you're writing with a person, we found, if you're writing by yourself, I found, uh, or you could say the test revealed, the test revealed uh, when Anxifree was compared to Joy Zipam, the latter was better at increasing, or the, the latter was, uh, the, I don't want to get rid of the latter. The test revealed that when Ang Free was compared to Joy Zipam, the latter performed, or I should say, uh, increased mood significantly. We're going to do T. And then we're just going to put in this t-value stuff, right? So t-value is negative 4.36. The degrees of freedom is 15. And the p-value is 0 0.002. And that's an adjusted p-value. So t15 equals some number. Refer to my t-tests for how to do this. So that's negative 4.36. And then we're going to do comma p equals 0 0.002. Then you could say the same was found when Joy Zipam was compared with the placebo pill. T, 15, this one equals uh, 5.88, 5.88, comma, P is less than 0 0.001. So I grab that from this right here. I will come to this Anxifree and placebo here in just a second. Uh, so I put a period there. All right, now the final comparison. Uh, Anxifree, the placebo did not significantly, ooh, significantly change mood. And uh, no, I, the uh, Anxifree and the placebo we're not significantly different. That's what I mean. We're not significantly 
different. Of course, I say definitely different when comparing mood gain. 15, that's our degrees of freedom for the whole thing. And then over here, we've got 1.52. 1.52 P equals 0.31, period. Okay, so I just got to go find my P's and T's and italicize them. All right, yeah, there we go. Oh, I spelled significantly wrong still. There we go, I fixed it. All right, now let's go ahead and plop these into the. So I'm going to go uh, Command X to cut it. Command V, or and this would be Control for Windows. And then instead of this being a period, I'm going to put a comma, and then I'm going to highlight this from my inferential. And I'm going to cut, cut that and paste it. Now I'm going to put a period. Okay, so this, essentially what I did was I said, this descriptive sentence is now corroborated with this inferential. And then we can do a new paragraph or add it to the same paragraph. I'm a fan of just doing a new paragraph. So because it's, it is something new. And so we just plop that in the new paragraph right there. And then we can ignore the rest of this stuff. So this represents a one-way ANOVA results section. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions, or feedback, please leave those in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.